But let us say, when I look at all the constraints, constraints that have uh, participated in the, the shaping of evolution, I come to the conclusion that whenever the conditions uh, allow, there will be increase in complexity. And this has been going on for bil several billions of years. There has been evolution in the direction of complexity has been going on all the time, from prokaryotes to eukaryotic cells. And then when the eukaryotic cells started making the first plants and the first animals, those organisms were extremely simple. And then over hundreds of millions of years, they have progressively developed and evolved into beings of increasing complexity. Of course, we still have bacteria, we still have sponges, we still have uh, uh, worms and organisms, but at the same time, there has been this evolution in the direction of complexity. And in the last six million years, there has been this tremendous uh, step from chimpanzee-like uh, primates to human beings. In six million years, the size of the brain has increased threefold, just uh, fantastically fast. Now, if we think that uh, there is another maybe five billion years left for life uh, on Earth, if this continues, uh, I like to think that uh, quite possibly one uh, hundred million years from today or 500 million years from today, there may be beings on Earth or elsewhere much more intelligent than you and me. Indeed, time has left us enough evidence to be able to confirm that between these two images, there is a difference of some six million years. A period during which the powerful forces of natural selection have barely differentiated us by one percent. And yet, what will the next picture look like? Or better yet, when will it be taken? Natural selection suggests that chimpanzees are our nearest biological relatives. They share more similarities with us than orangutans or gorillas do. The careening history of human intelligence actually started with them. Chimpanzees use tools, show affection with kisses and caresses, and have developed a complex social communication system. They are able to feel and express their feelings. They learn from watching and imitate both gestures and movements. The anatomy of their brains and nervous systems is essentially the same as ours. They can be seen performing uncomplicated, yet intelligent operations once they have learned them. Individuals living in the wild constantly need to make decisions about which group to live in or when to use force. After all, they are hominids, just like us. DNA studies say it all. The chimpanzee genome is 99% identical to the human genome. Of course, there are also some major differences. The most relevant difference has to do with speech, an ability possessed exclusively by humans. This is one of the reasons for our scientific name, Homo sapiens sapiens, hominids considered intelligent twice over.
It all began here in the Rift Valley, a beautiful place in Eastern Africa between Somalia, Kenya, and Ethiopia, a place known as the Cradle of Mankind. Up to now, this is the only area on the planet where we have found evidence of our earliest ancestors. Some four and a half million years ago, there lived here relatively short people with huge teeth called Artipithecus ramidus by paleontologists. They are probably our earliest ancestors, though many scientists differ on this question. And I think that it is most likely that we haven't found it yet. Um, of all the candidates that we know, of all the, the, as you say, many, many fossils have come in recently. But of all the possible candidates for the human ancestor, there's not one that I think is more likely than another. And I think it is most likely that we haven't yet found the, the ancestor, the real ancestor. Because in the fossil record, you sample, you, ne you never sample every single fossil that ever lived or every single species that ever lived. So it's very likely that we haven't yet found the right one. But we have to keep looking and maybe we find it. Meve Leakey is heiress to a prolific paleontological saga closely linked for more than three generations to the history of man's evolution. In 1994, she surprised the world when she found the first fossil evidence of Australopithecus anamensis, a certain rival of the Ramidus, for the title of earliest ancestor of present-day humans. The Australopithecus anamensis lived some four million years ago on the eastern shore of Lake Turkana in Kenya. Its anatomy suggests certain evolutionary progress inherited from its predecessors, but it does not really differ all that much from the Ramidus. According to reports written by Leakey after her finding, the anamensis still had a dental apparatus similar to an ape's, but the back of the skull had increased slightly in size. From the shin bones, Leakey deduced that her hominid was a biped, a trait it shared with the other predominant species in the world over the following one million years, the Australopithecus afarensis. Lucy is undoubtedly the most famous Australopithecus afarensis in the world. She looked like this. Female, she was over a meter tall. She lived 3,200,000 years ago around Hadar, Ethiopia. Her name comes from the Beatles' pop song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, a favorite among the paleontologists that discovered her skeleton in November of 1974. Lucy's finding finally confirmed bipedism in hominids. When we look at the fossil record that we have of our ancestors, there's a, a big group known as the Australopithecines. And they are usually considered to be the ancestral um, type of, um, or, or, and possibly one of the Australopithecines would be an ancestor for later hominids. And Australopithecus afarensis has always been considered to be the common ancestor of, of all the diversity that you see later. But I think maybe the Australopithecines were possibly an early group that in fact didn't go anywhere. And maybe again, we haven't found the group that actually represents the ancestors of, of, of ourselves. And as I say, we, we, we sample such a small sp sample in the fossil record. We don't have everything that ever exists. And I think the more that we find, the more we will realize that there are other possibilities out there. And so I wouldn't like to say myself, what is the direct ancestor? What is the, which of these is the most likely? The Australopithecines are more likely than the Paranthropines, for example. But it's not clear that Australopithecus is ancestral to Homo even, or even where Homo came from. And so I think we, we just don't know at the, at the present time. And if you look back into when you get to Ardipithecus ramidus, or Aurorin tugenensis, or any of these early forms, anamensis, afarensis, we simply cannot say. So when somebody asks me to draw a family tree, I say, no, I won't do that. 
Because if you draw a family tree with lines going from one to the other, you're implying that you know something that you actually don't know. And so I say that this group looks like this, this group looks like this, but we don't know which group went to us. We, we just don't know. There are certainly a lot of unresolved challenges in this area. But since we are human beings, we won't be able to resist the temptation of investigating and learning all about the details of our genealogy, even if it is no simple matter, given the scant information we have at our disposal. Why did we become human beings? And more importantly, how did we become human beings?